Well, thank you and hello, everybody. And um, the next 15 minutes, I'd like to ask you to join me on a funny ride through some of my slides, uh, some oversimplification of ideas, some pictures, um, and I'm going to run through that because I clearly see this in the back. So, groove to save the world. Wouldn't it be beautiful if we could groove to save the world instead of not doing things to save the world? And we started that with the idea in the back, what would an experiment in social change look like? And the, the beautiful thing about an experiment is uh, it has an open ending. Uh, and whatever result comes out is either good or bad. It is a result. So this is how we started. And we started with an observation. And that observation was everybody knows climate change is the biggest challenge of the 21st century. And everybody said, yes, yes, we know that. Uh, so good, so bad, but at the very moment we, we begin to make our minds up about climate change, we are confronted with an awful long list of things we shouldn't do. And most of the things we shouldn't do are the things we really love, like flying, driving big cars, wearing fancy clothes, gold. All the stuff we love seems to be bad for the planet. And whoever has a child, realizes very, very, the very early stage, the more you tell someone not to do something, the more he or she begins to, at some point, think, oh, maybe I, I want to do that. Anyway, so this was the, the idea we had. Why can't we just come up with some ideas of what people should do to fight climate change instead of telling them what they shouldn't do? And we said, this is, this is a very... Uh, I spent some time in Brazil, and everybody in Brazil always goes like this, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. And we said, oh, wouldn't it be nice to start an experiment to tell the people what they should do and engage them in things they love to do and at the same time save the planet. So this is the idea behind the Green Music Initiative. And because for me as a German, it's really hard to say initiative all the time. I say GMI. So GMI is Green Music Initiative. Initiative. Very bad word. Um, so we saw it in the beginning. Uh, who are the people? we want to work with or work for, and here they are. And millions, millions of festival goers, millions of people attending festivals. So these were the three questions, finally, we came up with. So we're asking ourselves how to engage with the public, because clearly we need some engagement with the public. We are asking ourselves how could the GMI accelerate social change, and we're asking ourselves how could we create sustainable alternatives. And over the next slide, I'm trying to give you some insight on, on how we are about to do that. Maybe the next one is better. No? Engage the public. So the, the first question we were asking ourselves, how to engage the public? And whoever is... Whoever... <laughs> Oh my God, yeah, yeah. Whoever tried to engage with the public is confronted with some people who couldn't care less. I mean, people like them, they're burners, they're consumers, they drive big cars, they fly on holidays, and somehow I sympathize with them. Because clearly, I mean, this is a mindset. I mean, these people, they have an idea, they said, I couldn't care less. I mean, I pay for that. Why should I care for the world? And somehow, these people, they have a stand in life and they have some energy. And with that energy, we can work. So these are the people easiest to motivate for change. Because clearly, we have to make our minds up why they love to burn, why they need a big car. And it's not that we can just approach them and say, you don't need a big car, you don't need to burn. No, we have to make our minds up, because clearly, it is a mindset. And these are even worse. I mean, these are the people so totally driven by fear. Oh my God, world is going to end. What are we going to do? No, what are we going to do? And the problem is, the more we read about climate change in the media, the more fearful they get. Climate change, so big, we're all going to die. And it's like they, they, they walk and each step is a bit smaller. They go, no, oh, oh, I'm afraid, I can't do anything. And the, the third people we're working with, are these who don't do anything at all. They just wait. And they think, oh, okay, my, my, if we just wait, some other will take care of that. 
And then you go, no, maybe not, maybe you should. No, 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 there will be some other taking care of that. We just wait. Everything's going to be fine if you wait. The good things about that, I mean, they, they are optimistic, and it's fun to work with optimistic people. The bad thing, they really are to motivate. Oh, I can do it tomorrow. And this brings me to some, some theory stuff, because um, over the last 10,000 years, mankind came up with some strategies for survival. First strategy was, let's run around and kill whatever we can do. And then eat it. We need, we need to kill to eat. I mean, this is basically mankind. So then the next strategy was, oh, maybe it's too big to kill it. Then we have to run away. So 10,000 years ago, in the Neanderthal horde, we're running around and then looking, oh, can we kill it? Oh, no, it's too big. We have to flee. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's quiet. It's, it's a good way of survival. I mean, fleeing brought us here. Running away is not a bad thing at all. Sometimes it really makes sense. So, over the 10,000 years, we really survived on that. Made sense. Either kill it, fight, or flee. <laughs> but in the, in the next, say, 300 years, another strategy geared its ugly head. And this is, this is what little lizards do. You know, lizards, these small, very small animals. And when an eagle is circling over a lizard, and the lizard sees it, oh shit. And then suddenly he goes, freeze. Oh my God, if I pretend I'm dead, the eagle won't see me and eat me. Very good. Don't do. Nobody move. Nobody get hurt. But we are, we are mankind. We are humans. But this is the way we're reacting towards climate change. Climate change is so big. And it gets bigger and bigger, and we read it in the magazines, in the television, internet. It's going to kill us. It's going to, we're going to drown, we're going to draw it, whatever. And this is the way we're reacting. We're just freezing, we're playing dead. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is interesting, that thing. <laughs> Energy. Good. Good. So this is the idea we had. And like we all know Martin Luther King, the big leader. And Martin Luther King, he wasn't known for, I have a nightmare. <laughs> no, he was known for, I have a dream. It works so much better if you have a dream. So this was one of the first ideas we had. We should create a common dream, a common vision of how a low-carbon future could look like and how beautiful it would be. And if we call it a fight against climate change, we're going to win that fight and not try to lose as little as possible. We have to change the mindset. So the next thing is how to create sustainable alternatives. I mean, we can't just tell the people, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't wear that. What about gold? You don't do that. We don't want that. So the idea was how to create a sustainable alternative. And instead of things we don't want, come up with ideas of things we want. And this is not so easy, because as of today, sustainability thinking very often tends to look to the past. People talking about sustainability very often look at all the resources we have, and they are stored in some kind of magazine or some kind of storage. And the more we look at it, we think, oh, let's make them last as long as possible. Let's make them last. Let's take as little as possible, and then we might just have them a bit longer. And the, the longer we look at them, the smaller it gets. <gasps> and all of a sudden, we realize it's nothing left. Oh. And then, then the people begin to think again, oh my, I'm fearful, oh, what should I do? So this is very often sustainability thinking, that all that energy efficiency issues. Energy efficiency can only bring us so far. Clearly, we, we have to save energy, but on the other way, why not? burn up all the coal, all the oil, the sooner the better. Because, I mean, every gallon of oil will be burned. It will be burned. So the sooner we burn it up, the sooner we have to change, the sooner we have to move into another direction. So, with sustainability thinking, coming from looking only at the past and what are we going to lose and, oh my God, oh, oh, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Why not look into the future and try to make our minds up what changes we would need, how 
how we can accelerate that move towards the future. And instead of trying to keep that what we have as long as possible, think of what else, what new thing, what new strategies we would, might need in the future. So accelerate innovation. We need innovation and not trying to keep that what we have as long as possible. Accelerate social change. This is the toughest one. I mean, obviously, social change is so important. But how, how to do that? It's such a grand scale experiment. It's such a grand scale experiment that it's really hard to even get an idea where to start. But like I said, it is an experiment. I mean, nobody, nobody in that room, not even at Google, has a clear idea what's going to happen in the next five years. No, not at Facebook, not at Google, no one. So why not take that as an experiment? And as an experimenter, we can say, oh, we'd like to find out what might happen if, and then it's an experimental setup, and then we can have a closer look and try to get a better understanding of how things work. Social change. People tend to say, okay, we have science, we have politics, we have business taking care of that. I don't think so. I would put it the other way around. We have loads of, loads of amazing amount of science, but we have an amazing amount of politics and business talking about it. But what's happening? Nothing. Too little. By far too little. And this is, um, it's, we have a behavioral gap. We know what we should do, but we don't do it. This is a behavioral gap, and over the year, that behavioral gap became a behavioral valley. It's not even a gap to jump over, it's more of a valley. Oh, oh yeah, we should do that. Oh, 10 meters. Uh, phew, uh, I'm not doing it. So, it's, not, it's a gap, it became a valley. And to work around that, we need social experiments. We need people to find alternatives. People, societies instead of waiting for science, for politics, for business to take care of that. We should stop thinking and start doing more and more, more and more. And the thing about a social experiment is it, it feels a bit weird in the beginning, a bit awkward. Oh, what I'm doing here? Are people laughing? Do I look silly? Yes, we all look really silly. It's funny. It's funny to look silly. I love to look silly at times. If you look at the picture, this is the other me. It's me as well. <laughs> yeah. So am I looking silly now or there? Your decision. Social experiment. These are festival people. These are young adults attending a festival. And the wonderful thing about a festival is, a festival by definition is a social experiment. It's the purest form of a social experiment. Whoever attended a festival what you do, basically, is you take your passport and throw it away for three days. And for three days, you experiment with music, with sight, with sound, with love, with drugs, with sex. So you experiment, you go there. You, these people even pay to experiment. And very often, when I, when I consult with politicians, I say, how can we move the public? Oh, they don't want to be moved, it's so hard. And then I say, yeah, these, these people want to be moved. They pay to be moved. Why not add sustainability thinking 2.0 into that agenda? So why not add some terms into that thinking? Thrive instead of doing less. Burn. Please burn. Nobody wants a modest artist. Nobody. I mean, could you imagine Moby on a stage? Hello, my name is Moby. I forgot my, my band, but I'm saving some energy here. Nobody wants that. So you want the stage to be big and lightning, but if we can do that with less energy or different ways of energy, this is, this is what people keep in mind. Abundance. We are living in a world of abundance. We have enough energy. So these are the festivals we work with. These are the things we're trying to do. Engage the public, accelerate, Create sustainable alternatives. This is us, and this is the campaign we just started. Thank you very much.